What is up ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to episode number 79 today of the My Player Career Mode. Hope you're having a good weekend. Of course, this is Saturday when this one should be going live, hopefully. Fingers crossed if all goes well. Although I am at work pretty much all day on Saturday, so I don't know if I'll be able to get it out in time before I have to leave. So we'll see anyways. But as we're going into game one, you can see the table there that just popped up very briefly. It's very, very close at the top of the table. In today's episode... There is two games in the Premier League to come with two games in the Champions League. If you don't know, Ben is currently sat within a semi-final tie against Spurs, which will be playing a double leg of today. And we've got games against Southampton and Spurs again in the Premier League. So this is going to be a very, very tough episode indeed. Now, I'm not going to lie. This first game against Southampton, one of the worst games we've probably played all series long. There is literally nothing happens in this first game. There is one or two chances and both of them are pretty much useless. So I'm not going to be around the bush and say that this first episode's worth watching or gameplay or anything like that. It really isn't. I just had to show you, obviously, to show you the result and show you what happens. But to be honest, I'm very disappointed with the way that Manchester United have kind of conducted themselves in this title race. You know, they've had chances to run away with this. They've had chances to kind of take the reins, if you so to speak. And they've not taken it. And it's inconsistency that's cost them a lot this season. And the lack of creativity as well in the side. We spoke about it before. I don't want to keep batting on about it, but it is a real lack of creativity in the side. Now, the game against Southampton, to be honest, I was kind of looking forward to it. It was at home. It was at Old Trafford. I felt like the boys could do well against them. And when we got the first chance inside 23 minutes, I felt kind of optimistic. The ball being played through by Ben into a teammate. And unfortunately, it was Matic actually on the end of it who couldn't keep his shot down. And that was the only chance of pretty much the first half for Manchester United. It was a disappointing first half. But as we got into the second, again... Nothing happened. 90 minutes on the clock. It ended up being a nil-nil draw. I wasn't lying when I said this game was unbelievably bad to, uh, to play. Just to show you, the match facts, there was one shot to both teams. And that was it. None of them on target. That was actually a full 90 minutes of a game where there was one single chance. So as I said, lack of creativity and consistency in this Man United team may come back to cost them in this Premier League title race. As it stood, Chelsea and West Ham were still to play, so we didn't know the result of that one there. But, as it, you know, kind of going into it, if they win that game now, it's all square pretty much, and Chelsea are going to run away with this. So it is disappointing, but we'll just have to focus regardless and hope that the, one of the teams can do as a solid beat Chelsea and allow Manchester United to drop these points and still have a chance at the title. But now... We're going into what I would call the more important game of today's episode. It is the Champions League against Spurs. We want to get through this. We want to see Ben win a second Champions League title. Just to let you know as well, guys, we'll be doing the first game of the Champions League this as postcom. Then the last game of today's episode will be live, as it is more important, of course, the second leg. Because after that one, we'll know whether or not Spurs are through or Manchester United are through. So Ben against his former club has the chance to knock them out of the competition. Romelu Lukaku, the player to watch. Not quite sure why, because um, he scored five goals or something like that all series long. And that's not exactly ideal from the, uh, the, the big Belgian. But regardless, he's the player to watch in this game. We'll, we'll just move forward with it. United's team is there on the screen feeds to look at. It's a decent side. But the problem they've got, they've played so many games this season that I think they're all pretty tired. And that comes down to the fact of how many competitions they've been competitive in. You know, this hasn't been like a bad season by any stretch of the imagination. It's just lack of consistency has really frustrated me personally because it's like they could probably be five or six, seven points clear at the top of the table if they could take their chances. And unfortunately, they can't do that. The first chance of this one fell the way of Ben, 11 minutes in when he tested the palms of Hugo Lloris. But unfortunately, the Frenchman was up to the, uh, the task of making a save there. And 15 minutes in, Martins finding himself down the right-hand side, lays it off to Ben. Ben gets into the box. It's a bad cutback from him. He squares it straight into Lloris, who could only palm it straight back. And I was uh, sat there talking about Lukaku and his lack of goals and why he wasn't the player to watch. Well, he gave United the lead inside 17 minutes. It was a very scrappy goal from Spurs to concede, I have to say. It was palmed straight back from Hugo Lloris into uh, Lukaku and he simply couldn't miss with the second attempt. Having said that, though, it did go through the, uh, the Hugo Lloris' legs. So... Possibly bad goalkeeping from Spurs, but then a mixture of that and just a little bit more wanting the ball from Lukaku has given United the lead and they have taken their chance of this one. And as it stands at Old Trafford, all they now need to do is not concede and they put themselves in a prime position to go through. But you guys know Man United is defending. We know what it's been like this season. And 20 minutes in, 
when they get the ball, Matic just passes it straight to Harry Kane. We're just basically digging our own grave at this point. And uh, if they have scored that, we'd have to lie in it. But unfortunately for them, De Gea was also up to the task of making the save. Now, at this point, Harry Kane receives the ball quite far out. He has absolutely no right whatsoever to put Tottenham back within the tie of this game. I'm going to review this back because it's something I've not done before, but I wanted to show you the defensive frailties that Manchester United currently have. So we're going to slow the play down and go over this. As you can see, look how far away from goal Harry Kane is here. Now, there is Raphael Varane and Stefan de Vrij both within position in here to stop him. The first challenge comes in from Varane, as you can see. And let's just say he's not strong enough with his challenge. There it is. Look at him. Side to side. Kane, no right to get through and score from this one. The challenge from Varane, it's not strong enough. You'd expect a lot better from an experienced defender. So he gets past him originally. Now, I want you to look at Stefan de Vrij's positioning at this point. It's not bad. It's not terrible. He's doing everything he needs to do, right? But it's now coming up where he misses his chat time, basically. Now, this point, look at the body language of Harry Kane. You can tell from this point now, because he's planted his foot, he's either going to shoot with a left, which is perfect, because unless it's an unbelievable shot, David De Gea should have it covered, or he's going to cut that back inside. As soon as De Vrij saw his body positioning do that, he should have stopped, come back on himself, and he would have been able to cover the cutback from Harry Kane. But he wasn't able to do so, and somehow United had given away the, uh, the goal. And what it means now is, as I said, the away goal ruling comes into play. So United have to go to Wembley and score otherwise they're out now it did get a little bit better for United they controlled the second half a little bit better Ben with the uh, the latest of the chances from quite a long distance out Lloris though decent stop with his right hand stops the uh, the ball from going in but like I just thought to myself when I saw the goal in go in from Spurs Harry Kane has absolutely no right when he receives that pass to go on to score there's two experienced defenders between him and the goal and neither one of them can stop him from equalising the game up. So, I don't know who to blame, whether or not that's the lack of United again really creating chances, or if that is just a defensive frailty that's allowed them to get back in the game. But to say the least, I was not happy one little bit with the way that that one panned out, honestly, guys. I felt frustrated, and I don't know really what's going on. Like, it just feels like this United team... Certain days they're playing really well, other days they're just so bad, like really, really bad. And that's not great when you consider the fact that Ben came here to win trophies. And when we looked at the start of the season, we all thought this was going to be easy for Ben. And it's turned out that actually it's not as easy as we th first thought it was going to be for him. But regardless, straight out of that first leg of the Champions League, we had another game against Spurs. This one, it's important, but at the same time, so is the second leg. You can see... Three teams at the top, all on 71 points. Spurs have played an extra game, though, so United have to win this one if they want to stay within the title race. That's all I'm going to say. So hopefully they can get the right results here today. Again, Spurs did just, of course, draw 1-1. I think they'd be happy with a point from this one, in all honesty. Like, United, of course, I think Spurs realised they've got three games to go. They, they've already played an extra game. Chances are Chelsea are going to win their final games and probably Man United will give them a tough run here. So I think Spurs are just focusing maybe on that Champions League tr title for now. But as it stood, United had the job to do. They had to score. They had to get the right result. And luckily, Lukaku, who scored the only goal of last game uh, for United against Spurs, of course, before they equalised, gets the first one in this one as well. So two in two for the Belgian. Considering the fact he's only scored five all season long before this, He's almost scored half as many goals as he has all season in two games, which is just crazy. So for United, they got the dream start they were hoping for. But then again, they did just get it last time out at Old Trafford. And look how that one ended for them. So uh, they're going to have to defend, unfortunately. And it took a deflection on the way through. That's what probably beat Hugo Lloris. But you have to take whatever you can when you're playing the way that United are playing at the moment. You have to take whatever luck comes your way. But Tottenham, 30 minutes in. Gave it to Harry Kane. Kane on the ball. Gives it backwards to Eriksen. Eriksen gives it away. He has been so good, by the way, in this Premier League campaign, Christian Eriksen. Genuinely an unbelievable player for Spurs this season. Ben, though, should have put his side two in front. He gets through. Unfortunately, he could only hit his shot straight at Hugo Lloris. And that is very disappointing from the Englishman. When you get through, you've got to do better with the effort. And, uh, yeah, I thought it was going to be two, but sadly not meant to be. And as we continued on... Again, United looked pretty confident in this game. We looked like we were creating the chances. Looked like we were going to get the three points from this one. Ben again on the edge of the area. Finds Martins. Martins whips across in. Comes to Lukaku, who should make the score 2-0. 
But unfortunately, a good save from Lloris stopped him doing so. And again, I think that was just frustration from Ben. At the same time, though, he wanted to stop the counter. And also, he was also being substituted at this point. He'd been told he was coming off around about the 60-minute mark. It ended up being the 70th minute. He ends up getting a yellow card there. It could have been worse. I thought it was going to be maybe a red for the challenge. But luckily, it's only a yellow. It is what it is. I mean, as I said, you know, it was more to stop the counter. Professional foul. It was a very bad tackle, to be fair. But sometimes you have to do that for your side. And that's what he did. So that's hopefully going to give United the lead. And as you can see, they did win a corner, did Spurs, with not too long to go. Now, are United going to fall at the final hurdle? Well, Harry Kane very nearly equalised again for Spurs. The crossbar denying him on this occasion. But again, I mean... What on earth is happening to United? It seems like as soon as they get that one to lead, they just flop. Luckily, the uh, the crossbar was on hand to stop Tottenham from equalising, which is a bonus, I'd have to say. Now, as the game ended off, United did get the three points, and it's great to get it, because I can confirm as well, Chelsea did win their game. But ultimately, the only thing I was looking forward to was this second leg of the Champions League semi-final, because if United don't score, they're out of the Champions League in the semis. So... It is a massive, important game when we go over to Wembley to take on Spurs again. And hopefully United will have the right result waiting for them after the 90 minutes have been played. Other than that, though, guys, we are going to go to a live portion of today's episode. I will see you all in a moment to get the second leg of the Champions League underway. Enjoy it, guys. All right, we're here, guys, for the live part of today's episode. This is an important game. United have to score in this second leg of the Champions League semi-final. Otherwise, they are out of the competition. As you know, the first leg ended with a 1-1 draw. You would have seen it earlier on in the episode today. But if they don't score, they're out because Spurs have the away goal to fall back on. So we need United to score here. Otherwise, it is sayonara to the Champions League. The other game actually... Um, is 2-0 at the moment to PSG against Barca. They've got two away goals to work with, so they're in a good position. But for, for Ben and Manchester United, it all comes down to this game here. So let's not waste any time. Let's get straight into this game. And hopefully we'll see Manchester United reach a Champions League final. Because if not, it's going to be bad for Ben. You can see there's a few players not on the right fitness here. It's been such a long season for these guys. Man, this is going to be a tough game here. Come on, boys. Don't let me down. And I'm not going to lie, guys, and say that today's episode has been good because, quite honestly, it really hasn't. The 0-0 draw against Southampton earlier on, mixed in, of course, with the 1-1 draw against Spurs. Then we got a 1-0 win against them, so that was kind of good. But, I mean, we, we really haven't had the best episode. It's been frustrating for me to watch as well. Um, we'll just see, I guess, how this one's going to play. But this is what the season basically comes down to. If it was me personally, I would happily let us lose a Premier League title if it meant that we were going to try and get ourselves a Carabao Cup and FA Cup double possibly and reach the final of the Champions League because I want to see Ben win another Champions League. Yes, it would be nice to win another Premier League title, but, you know, it is one of them things. You don't win a Champions League every, you know, kind of... You don't win it twice in a career. A lot of players haven't even won it once yet and, and are very, very good players. Buffon, for example, being one of those guys. So we want Ben to win another one, but he's going to have a tough task here. They have to score... Otherwise, they go out on the away goal ruling. So all Spurs have got to do is draw this nil-nil. And his former club will be sending Ben out of the competition. Let's see what's going to happen in this game right now. That's the side, of course, that we're seeing on the screen. And we'll just have to wait and find out who it's going to be that's going to turn this game around for Manchester United. I am really, really not looking forward to this. It's going to be really difficult, especially when you consider the fact that everybody's tired. You know, they've played a lot of games this year, Manchester United, and it really is frustrating to see the fact that they're never quite fully fit. But Mourinho has got faith in a side he's named. Hopefully it'll be a good team and hopefully United can get through this one, advancing to the final of the Champions League. The side is there for you to look at. You saw uh, Spurs is just before. I checked it as well. Eriksen has had a hand in 31 Premier League goals this season. He's a top scorer of the division on 23, and he's so far... Got nine assists in it as well. It's crazy. Oh, sorry, eight assists, I think it is. Actually, I'm not entirely sure. It's nine or eight. In which case, if it's nine, he's had, 20, he's had 32. If it's eight, he's had 31. So I can't remember off the top of my head which way around it was. But regardless, it's going to be tough. Let's get into it and hopefully watch United go through to a Champions League final. Good turn from Ben already. Looks to drive into the area. He's got past a couple of players. Looks for the cross as well. It's towards the middle. Not a good cross at the end of it, but that's a good sign. He's willing to do the runs. And... To be honest, all Spurs have got to do is keep him quiet today and they'll have a, a good afternoon, I would say. 
Obviously, they're not really missing him since he sailed to Real Madrid. Of course, since then, he's joined Manchester United because they've got Ericsson, who's doing well himself. Wood! Oh, I don't believe it! Is that blocked? It's got to have been blocked, right? He wouldn't have just missed it from there. Come on. Yeah, okay, it's a corner. So, did he get blocked? It must have been blocked. I tell you what, for a second there, I genuinely thought United had got the lead. For a moment, I genuinely thought United were winning this game. Here is now Matic. Oh, backwards, here he goes. I mean... Doesn't really work when we go back because the Vrij is just poor. I mean, this episode, if anything, has highlighted the uh, defensive frailties of Manchester United. They really are bad defensively. Here goes Redmond down the left for Spurs again. They are the more threatening team at the moment. It looks like Waniyama has been tasked with defending against Ben. I don't know why that's been given from the referee by Martins. I didn't feel that that was a free kick. Apparently, the ref said it is. Eriksen to whip it in. Matic should win that header and does win the header. Milik clearing it upfield only as far as Ben. But Ben now has nobody up here with him. So he couldn't really do anything about that. Had to lay it backwards. Didn't really have a choice. And, um, yeah, that just, that just proves my point. United just don't look urgent at all to try and get themselves in the front of this game. And that's a poor pass from Ben. Oh, Martins has just given the ball away. And you can say it's because Ben asked for the ball to be played. But that wasn't a difficult pass from the right winger to play. And so far in this first half, we've had 45 minutes of gameplay. And United have shown absolutely nothing to suggest that they want to get themselves in front in this game. Again, there's no urgency about this United play. When they get the ball, they're so slow with it that their passes are wrong. And look at that for a first half of football. Spurs' game plan executed perfectly so far. United have 45 minutes to change this game around. Otherwise, we're about to see a game that was as boring as a Southampton game earlier on. And we've even more of an issue to it because they'll be out of the Champions League. I don't know what to say. Like, I'm just watching this United team and thinking, why on earth have we come here with Ben? Why is Ben being transferred to this team? Because it looked like it was going to go good. And everybody was expecting this to be really easy for Ben. And all of a sudden, it's just not panned out that way. Because this United team are so inconsistent. One minute they can play really well. The next minute, they're like watching a bottom three team. You've been a very frustrating second half so far. We're 65 minutes in. This looks like it's going to be it, guys. Honestly, I don't know whether or not to be really angry, frustrated, disappointed. I don't know what to feel. Because this... I don't know why the players just don't... They are, there is a little bit of lack of, you know, urgency, as I've said before. They're also very tired, so you can say that. But at the same time, I mean, look at that pass from Martins. Like, that's what we're having to deal with this season so far. And it doesn't come down to anything other than the fact that, once again, United are inconsistent defensively. That should, could have been a chance. And Spurs have been the better team in a game where their game plan was to sit back and absorb pressure. They've created more chances sitting back than United have trying to get themselves a goal in this game. How the heck does that work? Martin's just beaten by his uh, fullback there, and that's going to be Tottenham winning the ball back straight away as well. We're on to all our attack at this point, so United uh, really have to be careful, because otherwise, Spurs are one chance away from completely ending this. I mean, it's pretty much over anyway. I don't think United have really got a chance to come back in this one, but while the score's still nil-nil, if they score that one goal that they need, there's every chance. Milik. Win the header, please. He does win the header. It's down for Ben. Ben on the turn. Ben, are you actually kidding? I can't believe this game. I really can't believe it. And then the pass is just straight. To oh, I'm getting frustrated. Sorry about the rage, guys, but you do understand where I'm coming from. The one chance that we needed, and it comes back off the woodwork, completely, completely beating the goalkeeper. And, of course, it hits the woodwork and comes back out. It's a joke. Oh, lovely. Ben, one, two. Oh, my. Are you actually kidding me? Who is that? It's De Vrij. Why is De Vrij there? It's game over. I know, I know people don't like to see rage, but this is ridiculous now. I cannot believe that they're actually going to go out to this. Ben should have just put his side through to a Champions League final, and the woodwork stopped him. That's it. And I, I can't really say too much more than I can't believe that we are not out. I just... I, or, I already want Ben to leave Manchester United just because of the simple fact that they just rolled over and accepted that. Yes, on another day, this one would have gone in and United would have been going through. Look at this. Goal gave him. Literally all it needed to do was drop in and United would have been going through to a Champions League final. Oh, man. Spurs are through to it, so they will go on to play in the Champions League final. United won't. And that means now that the quad becomes a treble. And even then, the treble doesn't look like it's going to be going our way. Because the Premier League 
They've had some disappointing performances in that as well. As I said, I don't really know what to, to think. Like, I don't know if I should be annoyed, frustrated, or, or kind of... I don't know. It's a really, really weird feeling. Because at the moment, I did hand in a transfer request as well, just to see what United are going to say about it. Um, I'd obviously... I don't want to leave without letting you guys know, but... The last 10 games in this United team... In fact, let's have a look at the, the last 10 games. So, nil no draw against Spurs, a 1-0 no win against Spurs, a draw 1-1 one, one win against Spurs, a nil nil draw against Southampton, a 1-0 no defeat to Arsenal. They did beat them in the semi-finals of the Cup, though, so that's decent. PSV, that was a different game. So, other than that City win there, 3-0, that they actually kind of played well in, other than that, look at the, the lack of, I guess, attacking threat that United have given. So many draws, so many slender 1-0 wins as well. It's not good enough. It really is not good enough. Especially when you've got the likes of Lukaku up front, 90 rated. I mean, look at this. We'll go look at our squad report because I wanted to show you this, actually. In the starting 11, let's have a look at the goal score between them. So our right back, of course, doesn't really get involved in the play. Varane scored four goals this season in 53 games. De Vrij just scored none. Mendy has scored none. Matic has scored three. Pogba has scored two with two assists in 63 games. Martins has scored six and seven assists in 63 games. Martial's the only one who's got a good record, and that's even not that great. 17 with eight assists in 60 appearances. Ben's on 25 and 19 assists in 52. Milik hasn't scored all season. Going down. Jota's got one. Lukaku's got six. Like, for a team with this much quality and that much money in the side, that's, ridic that's ridiculous. Between them... If you take out Anthony Martial's goals and you match it with the entirety of the starting 11 of Manchester United, four there, three there, that's seven, six there, that's 13, two from Conan, one from Jota, that's 16, six from Lukaku, that's 22. As a unit of the players that are playing on a regular basis, they actually have less goals put together than Ben does on his own. That is ridiculous. All right, I'm going to end the episode off there then, guys. And, of course, we did end it off in a bit of rage. Hopefully, you guys understand where I'm coming from, though. The reason I'm ending it off is because we're going to do the entire next episode fully live with the aspect that we've got three more games to come in the Premier League race. You can see there, Chelsea and Man United both on the same points. Goal difference separating the two. If it does come down to goal difference, Chelsea will win the league title. So, victory in the last three games for Chelsea will win them a title. Victory for Man United will keep them up there. So United really have to hope that one of the sides will do them a solid coming up. But that's going to be how we end today's episode off. It's not good. It's, it's disappointing. Ben out of a Champions League final. What could have been a second win for him? It's unfortunate, but that's the way it goes sometimes. If you did enjoy the episode, regardless, a like would greatly appreciate it, guys. As I always say, thank you so much for all of your support, as always. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you press the notification bell as well to never miss an upload. I will catch you all again with another episode of this series and the end of the title race coming to a close. Next episode out, which will be coming out in a couple of days, usually at that time of 4pm again for you all. See you all then. Adios!